to all our viewers out there, especially the ones that got bit into a pretzel over the BMW M1 sale, I apologize. It was complicated. We're up there to negotiate with the auction company when we're selling it. There's fees on the buyer side and the seller side. There's net fees, there's gross fees. And we just didn't know exactly what the sales price was gonna be. The buyer was in the room. I was the seller in the room. I'd agreed to a number, but they still had to go back and forth. And it actually took a while to get the deal closed where we knew what the sale figure was and we just didn't have it right then. Now, could we have posted it before we posted the video? Yes, we made a mistake. Try not to let that happen again. Again, thank you guys for watching and I apologize for that happening. Yep. Go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Go. Hold on. I missed it. You didn't miss it because it says it right in front of your face. Oh, used cars, GMC, and Jeep. 1947. Wow. Yeah. Is that real? What do you mean? Is it real? It's in my shop. It's real. That is 1947. How much is that $400 sign? Yeah. <laughs> We're at DFW Airport, we're now on our way to Davenport, Iowa. I bet a lot of you can figure out who we're going to see there. Some of the most famous American pickers in the world, they picked two really rare sports cars that were extremely fast during the day, a 541R Jensen and a CV8 Jensen. Great cars, great looking, super fast, some neat history. So grab your company, Joe, and go with us. We're at Duck City Beef Store today. We're gonna to meet Rob Wolf. This is his favorite restaurant. This is what he recommended. We're doing coffee walk backwards today. Food segment's coming first. So when I'm traveling and even at home, it's a lot easier just to mix up the AG1 to get all my nutrients for the day. I got my vitamin pack, which I think you guys would be shocked to see how many supplements and vitamins I take in there. You know, as we age, which I'm in that uh, category. Just pour the uh, vitamins in here, shake it up tastes great but it makes you feel great it's, it's good for your whole body health you're getting all your nutrients at once one of the most important things to whole body health which I've been practicing because my wife is scheduled to live till she's 150 years old so you, she wants me to live till I'm 100 is replenishing your body vitamins minerals supplements I've been taking those during the day the pills but man I gotta do one at a time I'm not one of those guys who can throw a whole handful in and swallow it so it's much easier to take the AG1 pack pour it in the glass shake it up get it all at one time. But also what's nice about this, one of my favorite times of day to do this, is in the afternoon around three o'clock, uh, especially around the office where we were traveling, I got a little bit of a lull, kind of the seventh inning stretch, mix this up, makes me feel better. So it's great whole health. So I highly recommend you try AG1 if you're on a bunch of vitamins and supplements right now. Go to drinkag1.com backslash Dennis Collins for a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 plus five free travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. AG1, great supplements. You got all your nutrients, vitamins, minerals, replenishes your body. Well, video, 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 who's got time to read a menu anyway? So we're at Duck City Bistro. Again, Rob Wolf recommended. This is his favorite place to eat. This is actually our first time to be in the Davenport area. Well, welcome to the Quad Cities, my friend. We'll make sure everything's perfect for you. So we tend to eat a lot. Good. We really enjoy so this. Is a, you're in Iowa. That's that's what we do here. Show us what you got. So everything I'm going to tell you about these are on top of my written menu. Right hand side over here, my Thai chicken, boneless breast of white meat chicken that we stretch on bamboo, little peanut dipping sauce and fried rice, bit of an Asian flair. The biggest shrimp cocktail in town. Six foot two in their stocking. They got shoes on. Smoked stuffed pork chops. Beautiful Iowa chops. They're stuffed with ham and Swiss cheese. USDA Prime New York Strip Steak. I serve it on today for brie cheese risotto. Sriracha caramel sauce and fanned asparagus. My horseradish crusted salmon. Norwegian salmon filet. Padded in horseradish, then sauteed on dill smashed potatoes. Mild cream horseradish sauce. All topped with braised Juliana crispy leeks. That one carries a warning, but be careful. It's habit for me. Okay. My house specialty duck city duck breads with duck confit candy duck. Sauce of Cumberland. It's a rich red raspberry sauce. Says Duck City there. When you order it, I'll put your name in it for you. Right. See that right there? American Pickers, no big deal. 
Doug Sadie, can we have coffee walk on the plate? Absolutely. All right. I can fit that. It's not a two plater, we're good. Brand new tonight, my pan seared sea bass. Fresh laying sea bass, wheat top of the mango, chutney and cashew nut crust, and a mildly infused curry voice. Brand new, my veal marsala. Tender medallions of proving me veal pound thin and saute scallopini style. Saute mushrooms and a marsala wine and heavy cream reduction sauce. Or the Cajun pan black and ribeye. Lighter side, not display. The Cajun pan black and mahi mahi. Now they're both black in style, a little bit spicy. They're served on dirty rice with a seafood etouffee. Charcoal tomatoes, onions, and a big, big black and shrimp. Uh, Lanya, as they say in all. <laughs> Outstanding. Any more here? Yes, sir. Brand new on the menu tonight, braised beef short <coughs> Braised for six hours in Chianti and Mirepoix. Served on candied acorn squash that I stuffed with sweet corn risotto, Cabernet glaze, and a, bar a blueberry barbecue. Fantastic. Wow. Never had that. Um, Pete, you know it's just a fancy word for french fries. Mine yes, are sir. fried in duck fat. Cracked pepper, sea salt, and parsley fresh Bernays sauce. And I only use Heinz ketchup in this restaurant. Duck fat the only way to go with french fries. Peace, the bone in black gang is prime rich. With an ancho chilies O'Brien, potatoes and a rosemary crust. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Is that what's on your website that sliced perfectly this medium rare? It, absolutely. Yeah. All right, that's my first question. Absolutely. Second question, your favorite meal? Duck. Third the question, duck which one is uh, the most ordered? Uh, probably a toss up between the prime rib chop and the filet melissa. Well, I know the four things we're going to order. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, great to meet you. Yep. Rob, tell Zach what you got. Beef tips. We're in Iowa. You got to have beef tips. <laughs> Did John Deere make these? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good, aren't they? You never had the beef tips down here? Wow, dude, they're incredible. These things are nuts. That is insanely good. Insanely good. Wow. They didn't no, look pull these off the river, did they? No, hell no. This ain't no river stuff here. <laughs> this came out of Kentucky. <laughs> so we got Where are you off to next? tempura fried uh, Thai chicken. Here. Here. My brother filmed this a little bit. I just got. I just did six days. It's gotta work. It was brutal. Fried Thai chicken with the rice and the sauce. Minneapolis to Madison. Madison wow. to Chicago. Look at that. New York City. There you go. Look at that. How you do it? All right, sir, what we got here? This is Iowa chop. Iowa pork chop. New York shrimp. There you go. Look at that presentation. Look at that. I don't eat any better than that. I don't. Look at that. No, that's good. I mean, that's some good Right Unbelievable. Yeah. Iowa chop is the best you ever eat in your life. That's guaranteed. Guaranteed. Iowa chop. Smoked. Isn't this smoked? Yeah. Smoked chop. Look at, Look at this. Look at the slice on that. Look at that. <laughs> Medium rare. Potato. Just like we ordered it. Yeah. We got a little potato action here. Beautiful. We have a lot of best spice tonight. Yeah. We got it going on tonight. I'm telling you that. Yeah. <laughs> the steak looks phenomenal. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the steak with pork chop. Wait till, wait till the that's a best out. bite. Wait till the fish comes out. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I can't wait that long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What's this? I mean, look at the presentation on that. Um, it's just uh, a marsala sauce on this, and then just powdered beer. So it's a beer marsala with marsala sauce. Yeah, and then we got an apple. Yeah. And the chef sliced it for us. <laughs> all right, Rob, you want to go first? I'm thinking it is. Your recommendation? Yeah, okay, I'm all over this. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. That was incredible. Okay. Thank you. That's like an aphrodisiac right there. Is that incredible or what? That right there is like, that's off the Unbelievable. <laughs> Horse for the salmon, plate's very hot. You want put a little fresh pepper on anything? I don't know I need pepper on anything. No, just leave it alone. What we got here, what's this? Bone in Black Angus Prime Rib Shop, with an inch of chilies over rye, potatoes and a rosemary crust. <laughs> This one? This that one? It's all sliced up for you. Beautiful, so it's incredible. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm still speechless on that. 
Look at this. Damn. I you got that one down? So far, get it off of there. Pull it. Oh. <laughs> that is phenomenal. This is exceptional. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. Is that a squash? Is that a plank? Very good. Gray short rib with a blueberry reduction sauce, which means it has to be good for you. There is nothing wrong with it. It's got a blueberry on it. That could possibly be bad for you. It's got blueberries on it. I would have tried that whole vibe, it's kind of big. Look at that fall off the bone. It's off the bone. <laughs> that has got to be best spot of the night. <laughs> That even, hey, is hey, money. Dennis, you didn't even taste the sea bass yet. Last but not least, it's called a pineapple guitar. I think it's pineapple ganache. Ganache. Okay. Chef, come on. I, I, I did ask for all So that's strawberry shortcake, but it looks like strawberry long cake to me. I'll have to ask my accountant about that. <laughs> I've never seen strawberry shortcake that long. Trying to, try to get it all up. Whoa. This place is outstanding. Eleven entrees, five desserts. Outstanding. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. So we're at the Axis Hotel in Moline, Illinois. We're heading back to Davenport, Iowa, which we went there last night. We went to dinner with Rob Wolf. So the dinner was amazing. After that, we were super excited to see the Jensen's, so we rolled through his incredibly amazing sign facility, which he collects, buys, and sells antique signs. The Jensen's were out back. It was kind of dark. We didn't get a good look at them, but let's head back over there. This is Ronald McDonald. Love that, Willis. Some cool stuff in here. Good morning, sir. Hey guys. What's happening, man? Good. You still full? You have a safe trip? Absolutely. Am I still full? <laughs> I think I'll be full for like two weeks after that, dude. Yeah, no, we left the cat out of the bag. We told everybody we ate last night. It ate last night. I mean, that's like, holy cow, that was that was more than a meal. I mean, I've, I've been to a seven course meal before. That was like 14 courses. Well, he said it was the best place in town. Might as well it try was. Everything. We did try everything. My, my, I don't think I'm going to eat for a week. I can tell you that. All right. Well, we actually told everybody that we came by here and had a sneak preview, sneak which we preview. normally don't do. So, I know, that's all right. Uh, one of the We'll hit on some of the really cool things we talked about if you don't mind that. Oh, yeah. Winchester sign. Oh, yeah. Yep. Around 19, late 40s, early 50s. Um, double sided glass. Original leaded can. Leaded, I mean, that's like handy. That's when, you, as you know, Dennis, that's when they actually craftsmen were building stuff. I mean, look at the look at the details on that. That's amazing. It literally is. So, this is all that's hand painted. All reverse painting glass. It's about a 10 part process to get that to do what it does. And then we switched all the bulbs inside that to LED, but it's got all original wiring, everything in it. So, as far as collectible signs, I understand all the petrol signs. Oh, yeah. I understand the gas cans. Yep. I understand all the automotive signs, but how collectible are gun signs? Well, this is very, I mean, guns are very popular in America. So, this, something like this, this is probably one of one knowing that would to exist. Right. I mean, I've seen some Winchester stuff sell 20, 30, 40, 50. I mean, this sign could be a hundred grand. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's, you wow. know, it's double-sided, it's reverse painted glass. 
Um, you know, everybody talks about the collectible side on the gas and oil. I like gas and oil, but I love. I'd rather buy stuff like this, like that. You know, this came off. The, this is a train that came off of a. Um, the Texarkana to Kansas City. It was called the Flying Crow. That's all original paint. Wow. Yeah. So you know, when you, I'd rather find stuff like this than I would any gas. Yeah, one-off stuff. Well, it's just harder to find, and it just it, this tells the story of America. This stuff does. The gas and oil stuff is just gas and oil. Well, I can understand the gun stuff because there's some obviously in America there's some major gun collectors. Oh God, there's you know seriously this thing said Colt on it. Huh. You were a way more. Really? There's, Colt, there's ten times more Colt collectors than there are, and that stuff's harder to find. Sure. I don't know why. Sure, but yeah. So how long have you been in this building? Three years. Good Three years. Three. It looks it. like you've been here for a hundred. Yeah, I know people say all the time, but you know the beauty of this building was it was built in 1932, and um, the family that started this operation it was in the automotive industry, and as you know, being in the automotive industry, it's so freaking crazy. This these guys started in 1901, downtown Davenport, fixing carriage wheels. Wow. And then they went from, they were also did bicycle work, and then they, from 1901, went all the way to Model T's, fixed all those, and then they got into the body shop side of it, and 1932 built this building, and they stayed in it till 2000, 2020. So, wow. did you get any signage from them? I got a few things from them, but nothing that was like crazy. I mean, because the father, you know, the, this was, that was fifth generation in here. So, I've seen you have more than one Michelin yeah. items. Oh, they're everywhere. So, how are those priced? Which is worth the most, the small or the large? Well, this is these are called truck doors, right? This is this sat on top. Believe it or not, in the early days, Michelin put that on top of a truck. They're on the corners of the semis when they wow. left the factory. Michelin was so proud of what they was going on. This is what sat there, and now even today, they still have. I don't. He's right here. This one right here. This is the one they use today. Let me get him to sit there. This is the one they use today. This is the Michelin guy that sits on top of the truck right here. He's just this is just plastic. Yeah, that and that, this really is off. Small. Well, and that's off of air. Yeah, that's off an air pump. I was just going to ask you about yeah. that because I've seen a, the complete air pumps before. Really, really cool. Do you have a complete air pump? No, no. I've seen the, one in that's a while. the small one. Okay. They made the big one like this, this thing, this size right here. So they actually the air pumps were were they gas powered? I don't remember. No, electric. They were okay, so yeah. they were electric. Right? Yeah, but think about the size of that. That's now tiny. think about so that hose size. coming out and you already retire with it. Yeah, but this size right here, they made a bigger air pump with that cast iron on it. That's the one everybody wants. That's like ten to fifteen thousand if you can wow. find them. Mission stuff is super cool. Well, there's still, you know, if you've ever seen the plant that's over in, you know, they, they left the original plant over there in Europe and it's just all porcelain and it still has, you know, him smoking a cigar on it. If you can find any of that stuff, that's the cool stuff. So how many, uh, I'm sure you get asked this question all the time, how many thousands of items are in this building? No, there's probably, so probably 75,000. 75,000 items? Yeah, in this building. I mean, there's so much stuff in here. Yeah. Wow. When you look at the collecting field, everybody thinks of just cars. I'm just, I'm, I, I always look at it as I'm an antique dealer. Well, you do have a lot of, I mean, from what I've seen in the past from watching you guys, yeah. you do do a lot of cars, motorcycles, yeah. bicycles, yeah. car related stuff. Oh yeah, but I also that you know for me like I get into the general antique space jokes. You know, a lot of people are like, "Why would you collect face jokes?" I think they're cool. I don't even know what that is. Well, back in the day, they used to make face jokes. You know, uh, potters back in you know from the 1800s all the way through, they'd throw extra potter, boom, and make a face jug. Wow. So they're collectible. Well, let's Memory see, jugs. Let's see some of your big signs. Oh yeah. There's all there's big signs everywhere. Well, you know we got to stop here and look at this crazy Benelli. Well, it's, and these were built by a guy named Frederick, and uh, he owned a Harley dealership in the 1950s, and he was just an artist. I mean, everything on this piece is hand done, hand pieces, you know, from the seat. Look at how he did the seat. The conch is on the back side here. Everything about that bike is artwork. I think that's one of the cool things about going to like Bike Week or Sturgis or something. Oh. You can see these guys that, well, some of these guys have spent their life building their bike. Yeah. This guy and did six years. Six years. Six, or six years he spent doing this one, but the biggest one he did is in the Harley Davidson Museum. It's a twin engine knucklehead. It sits right in the middle of the museum. It's one of their Holy Grail pieces. So amazing. I have three of his bikes. I got this Benelli. I have a Wankel one that's in the back that looks like a robot, I think. And then there's a, also a Moto Guzzi I own that's decked out more than this. 
So Rick Fairless, I don't know you know who he is, oh, yeah. Strokers and Dallas. Have you ever yeah. been to his shop? Oh yeah, crazy stuff. So some of his motorcycles, just the paintwork is in the it's, thousands of hours. Oh, he's got, you could put 20, you know, there's not a lot of paint on a bike, but you could put $20,000 worth of paintwork on some of his bikes, easily. I appreciate this, so that must have just taken forever to yeah. do. That's One of these days cool. I might get it down and freaking ride it. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, I don't know license plates. Yeah, it's license plate crazy. toppers. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, you're looking around, as you look around in here, it's not just gas yeah, oil. That's a big Michelin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the, actually, that's a rare Michelin. That's the, that's the map holder. Okay. You'll always find the bottom piece, but you never find the top piece. So, that's the only one I've ever seen. See the top of it, which yeah. is held, that's where all the maps were held in this. That's really cool. And I put a little freaking, I always put stuff on these guys, but yeah. That's around 1960. So, so I have noticed a trend, and maybe this is just me, but noticed a trend in the, like, you've got these motel signs. Yep. Uh, several of my friends, Richard has bought yep. several motel signs lately. So has that always been a thing, or is this? I think the motel signs in America, you, you know, you, if you go back into the 60s and the 50s, that's when people were traveling. You don't see signs like that anymore. You know, and then here, this is the biggie right here. You, you'll remember this, the diving lady. That's okay. Incredible. They were on the outside. I had three of them that dove in, that was the outside pool going down, and it dove into the pool. And that was the sign that came off of it, Central City's Finest Motel. Well, you don't see Holiday Inn and Hilton and all those guys basically advertising for their pools anymore. Right. Back in the early days when we were kids and that we was used to travel, deal. that was a, oh, it was a huge deal. Our parents, your parents were like, man, these kids have been trapped all day. We need to get them in something, get some exercise. Playground pool. That was the way it was. You remember when the holodomes came out? Oh yeah. god! So you could stay somewhere that was cold, but you could still go swimming. Yeah. Every so day. that's neat. So that's what showed you that had a yeah. The, you swimming had, pool. had a pool and had and there were three of these that actually were on a pole next to the motel with the cottages. Wow. They said, "Hey, we got we're gonna pool," and then that that was on the actually the, the that sign came out of uh, Omaha where we got all of those. Love yeah. the Triumph sign. Very cool. Yeah, that's early. Anything early from around this region, I try and collect. That's uh, that was one of the um, guys that he ended up on an Indian dealership eventually. This is uh, Bob Boots. Uh, that's in 1930s. Somebody used it as a paint freaking thing to mix paint on, and that's Bob Boots right here. That's him. So I bought these photos a long, long time ago um, at a er, at a show, and when I did, I didn't have the sign. A guy just walked in my shop one day and goes, "Hey, I think you're in." in this and I was like heck yeah I've got his photo. That's neat how that happens. I mean like some of these like when yeah. we basically told the story of the Shelby race car that Absolutely. nobody could figure out. Correct. That's the show really helped us with that and people just came out of the woodwork and we got it all figured out. Yeah. Yeah. This cool. came off a of brothel. Uh oh. I have the whole story on the Lincoln Highway and in the back of it's got the story on it from the brothel. But yeah that uh any of that stuff. Good grief you can spend forever in here. Oh yeah, you can just you can you can look forever in here. I mean, here, this is one piece I just picked up the other day. People are real. I'm like, hey, look at that. Look how cool that is. That's an early Everwood boat trophy. Wow, and that's really early. Look at the boat on there. And that's a big thing collecting these outboard motors. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's I, I got tro I love trophies. I collect trophies all the time. Wow. So what is your uh, jumping ahead a little bit? What's your favorite sign in here? Um, neon. Yeah, I mean, neon-wise, I'd have to say, uh, you know, that's a hard one. But I've got too many. Well, I like do to, you prefer I, the big neons over the big that, porcelains? I like the big neon and the big porcelain, but like this OK Chevy, this came off as, I took that down off the original dealership in Arkansas. It's one of the most popular signs out there. But it's I've seen them, but most of them are reproductions, right? Yeah. Well, there's a ton of reproductions, but they made a four foot, a six foot, and an eight foot. So this is a six foot. And those, those uh, badges that I have over there, they actually go on the bottom of it. This, the beauty of it is I took it down in Arkansas from the original owner. So it's two Bosnian refugees built this in Chicago around 1960. This is a Mustang motor out of a Mustang car. Okay. Air compressor. Uh, AC compressor is, the, is run as air, so it can run the shocks for the back to move the bike backwards to go in reverse, because it weighs so much. They drove it around Chicago up until about 1965, 1966, 
and then they got deported. Well, the home that they were living in, a friend of mine was the banker at the time, he inherited all the contents of the house because they just left. He owned a farm in Iowa, shipped this thing to Iowa. You can still see the bird nest in there. We left it in there. <laughs> that is so yeah. cool. We left it alone as, as a, you know, kind of a treasure trove. But the, it sat in his barn until he died and his brother called me and said, hey, you guys need this. So I went down there with a winch and pulled this thing out. That's it. It's got a 200 cubic inch, yeah. which would have been 65, probably 67 Mustang. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, and how he did everything. I mean, like these are these are the kickstands. This is the kickstand. <laughs> you know, he built that. The bike is solid. All it is is solid tubing. You know, if you look at how he that built it. That must just be insanely heavy. Well, that's why he had to put AC compressor as an air compressor to push these down as air shots. It's literally got he, a car steering column. Yeah, he left it on there, and then this is still how you steer it right here. Okay. And then it had a dash on it. It's, and on the side of it had air, green arrows right here. So it's just, was there a name for this thing? I never named it. Nobody ever named it? Well, you know what I wanted to do with it, Dennis? I wanted to leave it on here, and I wanted to get this thing so it ran, so when people freaking looked at it, you know, they're looking at it as a barn find. I just push the button and it freaking started to run. Just to freak people out. It wouldn't be that hard. No, it's just it's a Mustang motor. Six hundred motors run. That's yeah. really cool. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy yeah. stuff. I know. I'm you, every amount of time could, to do that. You could stare at that thing for hours on end. I didn't see that last night. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's probably one of my pride and joys when it comes to vehicles. A lot of people don't understand it because they think it should be restored. And I actually bought this nine years ago and restored it to back what it, what it was. No, I get the patina, I like it. Well, it was built in 1952. That's an Oldsmobile rocket motor that was sitting in the back of it. I bought it at a car corral up by Chicago. And this thing is just, it runs like a rape. I mean, it gets that up. That motor there. itself, right? It's a J2 motor, right? Yep. And it's got, it, and we did, it's got a Merc dash on it. I've got a Merc steering wheel that goes back in there. It's got everything that's done to it. So it's, this Mercury dash back in the day was just, ah, that was the thing to have. Yeah. And when, and when I got it, the whole interior was black. Black. Like you couldn't even, like it sat in a coal mine. You couldn't even see any of this. And when then I started washing it off, I was like, oh my God, it's got the original pinstriping, all the dashes there. Yeah, this and the Diamond T truck dashes yeah. and the Packard dashes, whenever one of those cars got wrecked, if you had a wrecking yard, yeah. that was so gold. You saved, you saved every piece of that. I like it, that's so cool. The why not, basically, this, they actually made a model of this. Really? Like, yeah, I have it in my office. So, and that's the original board, and I have original photos of this truck, too, that uh, were at the shop. And of course, anything 32 Fords. The only thing Holy is, trail. man, I'm, you and I know we can't fit in this. <laughs> yeah. I've driven this to Chicago, man. I've, I've been hurt because my knees are way up in the air. That's why I had to change the steering wheel. 55 to 57 T-Rich were tough. Oh, to get in without it. Yeah. So, man, there's, just there's so one from Texas here. for you right here. Really? Look at that. <laughs> Burke Burnett, Texas. Yeah. Uh, Very cool. That's a daily driver, something that, that has zero rust on it. We'll just, you know, we're finishing up the interior on it, getting things done on it. And that's just going to be the driver. 58 so, is such a great body style. Oh my God, I love the freaking back end of awesome. this thing. It's just incredible. The place is amazing. It's getting there. It's, uh, I felt, you know, it's like anything. There's your Jeep sign. There it is. There's the Jeep sign. We talked about that last night. <laughs> yeah. That's the only Jeep sign he has. Well, you don't find Jeep signs, period. You know that. Well, here's the problem with Jeep signs. There's about five guys yeah. in the U.S., and that is what they do. So oh, if they one comes Jeep. up, they know yeah, they just they, oh, they buy the Jeep signs. signs. Yeah. So, and they have pretty much hoard them, but when they do come up for sale, yeah. they're all over. To get now, them, the, tough to get to one quick. That original, uh, the, they made a 4x8 one that's got a Willys Jeep on it that says Jeep. You've seen it before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Back in the day, when I first started collecting, those were anywhere from two to six hundred dollars. The last one I seen sold for twenty-five thousand. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's the only signage that I'll buy. So, yeah. you know where to send that? Social at cbjeep.com. Dennis Jeep signs. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for shame? That's yeah. cool. You got it. You got it. It's all about that. That's what I've never seen before. Yeah. Mortimer Snurd. That is so cool. I had the box. Can we open this up? Here. Oh yeah, heck yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. See, honestly, when I first started in this business, you know, 35, 40 years ago, I always collected toys, but the toys were so out of realm back then. They, 
that you couldn't touch them for money. So the copyright on this is 1939. Yep. What year is the toy? Um, well, more just matured. ish. I want to say 36, 37. Looking at the looking at the car itself too. That's really cool. It's in mixed shape. So I I I, I kind of got rid of all my toys. 35 years ago because that market was starting to change when eBay came out, boom. Yeah. Anyhow, after that, now the toy market is starting to slowly come back, but it hasn't come back enough. I, I buy a lot of toys right now. You have to. Buddy L, that was from our, that's from our region. It's a Buddy L train. Wow. This sign right here. It's rare, rare, rare. It sure is a good shape. Yeah. Good grief. So, yeah, and they were based out of South Bend, but there's there was two different, different versions. One had a blue coat, one had a red coat. This is, the, now if you look at that, this is painted. I mean, look at, it almost looks like it's porcelain. Yeah, it does look like porcelain, that's amazing. Man, I could spend all day in here, but I'm dying to see the Jensen's. Right. <laughs> so when I got the phone call to go get these Jensen's, um, basically the lady is a, uh, she was a designer and lived in England her whole life up until I think till she turned 62 and then her husband inherited a farm and they moved back to the United States. Well, she brought these Jensen's with her. She always drove Jensen's forever. So they brought unusual. these here from the UK in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. And Thank they, goodness, because the chassis would be terrible if they'd been over there this whole time. Oh, I can't even imagine. So the 541R, that was her husband's. He died, he was 82 years old, he died. And then this was her personal car that she drove. She actually had one of these as in, and I know you know uh, Interceptor Convertible, is sure. that what it was called? Sure. Yeah, so she had one of those in a convertible that she drove all over England. Well, here's how closely I liked the pictures. I really didn't. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I was under the impression that's a 541, but that's a 541R. R, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's supposedly, what I was told, maybe you can, I was only told there's like four of these in the United States. I'd believe that because they only made 193 of them if it's an R. Yeah. And it is a true R. I got all the paperwork. That, you know, this was what built in '54. This was the fastest production car. It ran 129 mile an hour with the back seat. That was their big claim to fame that they could put four people in the in this. And, the, and it has the original interior in it. So you know more about these than I anticipated. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm just going to pay you what you're asking for before we talk about them anymore. Deal? Yeah. I won't even argue with you. All right. <laughs> so what else is incredible about these cars is. They were actually as fast, if not faster, as the Aston Martins. Oh, really? Yep, and the XKs. So on, As on the Aston Martin, it was made of fiberglass. It was made of aluminum? Aluminum. The, aluminum. the, the initial 541s were aluminum, the show cars. Okay. So this body's fiberglass, as you know, yep. but the doors are aluminum. Yeah. So that's aluminum. Yeah. What else is neat about the 541 Rs or the early cars? So the Rs got four-wheel disc brakes. Oh, all the way around. That's a big deal for back in the 50s. Oh, yeah. Okay. The other neat thing is it's a six-cylinder, it's a four-speed car, so it's a four-liter six-cylinder. It has three, uh, three. I heard four carburetors, but three is what I see on there. Somebody told me there's a fourth one down below. Is that correct? The gauges all look correct. Yeah. Now, that you, have you had the hood up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see here. This is a pleasant surprise. I was just thinking this was a 541. That is impressive. It's so, it's so, you know, I don't want to say crudely, but it is kind of crudely made. I mean, well, the only Corvettes were crude too. Oh, I know, it, it, they complete. But this supposedly, my opinion, was better. If I was going to buy a car in 53, 54, it would have been this over well, a Corvette. If you look at the chassis of the car back in the day, you know, like an Arnold Bristol yeah. or even an Asuka or Maserati, yeah. AC Ace, I mean, this is what the chassis look like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine this thing getting up and going. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, crazy. So original data tags on the firewall. Yep. Yeah, so anyhow, the, the lady that owned this, if you do a little research on her, she was a famous designer. Okay. And, and she was in Vogue magazine probably a couple hundred times. Wow. You know, fiery redhead. I mean, she looked like she's from Ireland, and uh, she, uh, we'll she definitely was a look her up. Oh yeah, definitely a Spitfire. So you know, the, this but, thing's this thing is sick because it's fiberglass and it's got a 383 in it. Okay, so this is <laughs> a, so this is a later CV8, right? Because the earlier CV8s had 361s in them. Okay. So 
This it, it was, what year is it? 64? 64. 64. Yeah. And you can see the CV8 right here, which gives it away. Yeah. Um, but you're right, 383 four barrel. Now, what would, what would be insanely rare, this is a four speed, but I'm sure it's an no, automatic. No, it's yeah. automatic. So there were only a handful of these with four speeds. Yeah, it's an automatic on the dash. Now, they made more of these. There was a couple hundred of these. They made about almost 500 of these. But this is a fast car. Well, yeah, it's got a 383 in it. That's why I'm like, it's solid fiberglass all the way through. When I opened the engine up, I was looking at it, I was like, what the heck did they do to this thing? So here's Look at some that. of the most impressive stats I know about these. Faster than an Aston Martin DB5. Wow. Yeah. And the zero to 60 time was exactly the same as a Lamborghini Euro. For, and and for they were- order of the money. Yeah. The, well, they were still pretty expensive. Now they weren't Lamborghini money, no. but- uh, No. That's a serious car. So 383 four barrel with a torque flight. They use these motors in the Super Commandos. But you know, I, I haven't seen one of these in forever. This is also full of this brake car. Look at the size of the radiator. <laughs> Good grief. Honestly, the number one reason I called you guys, because I don't have the freaking, I don't have the knowledge or the time to do these, and they need to be done. That's one of the reasons I, I was like, if anybody can do these, you guys can. Because that one right there deserves to be. Both of them do. Well, this I love this, but I love that more just because of the back end of it. Yeah, but this car is serious. Rarity. Got tons of power. Oh, I know. It's yeah. I can't even imagine. I, can't I, even I like imagine. them both. Yeah. Really cool. So yeah, I just think going. You know, these were four seat cars. They called them Grand Tours. Yeah. Some people didn't really consider them sports cars. They were definitely sports cars. Oh, how, how do you not call that a sports car? I think you have because to. they had a back seat. But you're talking about you know running with Lamborghini Muras, Aston Martin DB5s, Jaguar XKs. Yeah. This outran the XKs in the quarter mile. That's a serious car back then. It and this car ran 100, almost 140 miles an hour. In 1964. Yeah. That's a fast car. Yeah. Wow, these are cool. They're 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 beyond cool, dude. They're they. I got all the hubcaps too. The Jensen hubcaps that go on there. I don't know if that door's open or not. That is really cool. Jensen's owner club. Yeah, the file I have on these, she's got every everything that they ever did to these. Just a huge stack of paperwork that came with them. The emblems and the badges are all just so trick. Well, everything. I and I have all the hubcaps too. I think it's this one or this one. I think there's four hubcaps, but I think they went on this. I'm pretty sure they went to this. <laughs> these tough there's, are fine. Oh well, and there's the bumpers. Okay. Those are the two bumpers that. The half bumpers or whatever you call them, they they went down the sides like that. I mean, they're, Very they're cool. crazy. I think they went this way. They went this way. Yeah, right here. Look at that. It's almost restored. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see them done. Serious. I can't. I cannot wait to see these things done, man. They're going to be incredibly. You know, I don't know. That I'm going to be the guy that tackles it, but certainly there's somebody. There's guys out there that will. These are super cool. Again, 541R. That's really neat. I'm glad it's an R. That's a uh, huge it. improvement over the 541. Well, which is still a good car, but that's 127 miles an hour versus 107 miles an hour. Big difference. Huge big, difference. Big difference. Love them. Yeah. Thank you for holding them for me. Yeah. I appreciate you. Zach, I totally forgot something. What? While you were shooting the B-roll and the signs and the Jensen's, I found a black Mustang Fastback in the corner. Rob didn't tell me anything about it. I walked in and asked him how much it was. And of course, we bought it. Now we're on our way back to Wiley. As always, please like, tag, share, and follow. But most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week.